Thus far we've focused on two of the four common DML statements. There are other DML statements, but again, the common ones include select, insert, update, and delete. These are the statements you're likely to use in any front-end scripting or programming language that relies upon database connectivity for its operation. It's now time to look at update. Update is pretty straightforward. It does exactly what its name implies, which is it updates columns in tables and can optionally update multiple tables if you use joins. For now, we'll focus primarily on updating data in one table. So let's describe what we want to do here. The task number six in this case is to update all rows with same info in one or more columns. This is the easiest update statement to run because when you run update without any clauses, meaning without where, update will apply the update to all records in a database for a given column or two. Let's show you what we mean. We'll return to a shell and we'll take a look at one of the columns that are defined in one of the tables. A show tables reveals that we have people, people two, people three. Let's select star from people and see what's currently in need of updating. Take for example the business phone number. It is unspecified for approximately or for exactly five accounts. This is a good candidate, or this particular column is a good candidate for running the update statement because if there is a consistent phone number that should be present for all employees at a company, perhaps we should run an update statement rather than inserting or updating on a per record basis. We run one global update command and everyone will end up with the same phone number. So how do we go about doing this? Well, we could easily run an update globally and what MySQL does is if it finds that the value that is to be placed in the column already exists it ignores the record so if we tell MySQL to update all the records and when it hits record number one for example and sees the number 888 and so on it'll just skip this record so it'll skip the first n number of records and when it hits this record it updates it the next record skips the next two and then updates the final three records. So let's show you how to write such a simple query. It's simply update followed by the name of the table which is how the syntax is defined. In this case that table's people followed by a set command and after set we set the column that is to be updated. The column in this case is biz phone one and we'll set it equal to in between single quotes followed by a semicolon the number that we'd like to use. Let's just copy it from the shell and paste it using the capabilities of the graphical environment. So there we have a simple update statement. Without any wheres or clauses, this will update all records. Let's copy it and return to the shell where we'll re-execute. And after we've executed this statement, we will run a select star from people to confirm the updated changes. Now notice, after we updated the rows, the results were returned. Rows that matched included 15. However, only 5 were changed, which was what we expected. We can easily count those rows. 3 at the bottom and 2 above. So only 5 were changed, which results in less of a hardware taxation on the resources of the computer because MySQL is efficient. Now all rows contain a consistent phone number. But what if we've made a mistake and this number should be reverted or changed to something else? We'll simply rerun an update query with the new number. Change the value. Let's say we want to go to the non-toll free number. Just simply change it in the update query to a different number. Let's say this number for example. And just like that, once we've executed the query, followed by a select star from people you'll see that it'll be updated. In fact, let's go ahead and just do a select bizphone1 since we don't want to see necessarily all of the columns and notice all of the columns have been updated. 15 rows matched and 15 were actually changed. It required a change for all of them because none of them had the new number that we wanted to place in this particular 
field. Notice also we've changed the nomenclature using dots instead of dashes or the number separators, but that's irrelevant because the field type is character 20 and it'll store 20 characters of pretty much any type, supported by any of the character sets of course. So now I select star from people will reveal that all the values have been updated and if we need to revert for some reason we simply go into our history and find that number and update it to the toll-free number and all the records have been changed just like that. Now we do have other tables in this database. Let's execute a show tables and then let's see what's in the other tables that need to be updated. We'll select star from people 2 and people 2 is pretty clean. How about people 3? People 3 certainly has columns that need to be updated so we can go ahead and update bizphone1 for people3 in a similar fashion. Let's just find that update statement and update it likewise. Instead of updating for people, this will be for people3 and we'll set business phone equal to the toll free number. And you'll see momentarily, let's update, we specify people E which should have returned an error. And now they're all updated. So all the records were updated and five were actually changed in the new table. So that's a simple update query for all records. But what if we needed to update records that matched a certain criteria? So task seven is to update all rows, and this could equate to one, that match a criteria, specific criteria which means we need to identify rows that may match any criteria that we could define. The update query looks similar, so we'll copy what we've used, but we're going to append, of course, where and the matching criteria. Let's find what could be updated. We'll begin with the people table. Let's execute a show tables because it contains fewer rows. We'll select star from people and we'll search for things that need to be updated. Take for example, we have two records for the user Diamond. She has no last name set and in one of the cases the email address is blank. We can determine which of these records we'd like to update based on criteria such as matching a blank email or even a null last name. If we want to update to only update this particular record for example where email is blank of course we'd have to set it to something other than the address already defined because the email column again when we execute a describe against the people table is a primary key and because it's a primary key it must be unique so we can't use the same email address but as long as it differs even by one character we'll be able to update it so we need an update query that searches through all these records and when it finds that one record which contains a criteria such as a blank email field to have it updated. So how do we go ahead and write that? Well, back to our shell or back to our gedit window to prepare the command to be placed into the shell. So we're going to update people. We're going to set instead of business phone one email and we'll just set an address that slightly differs. Let's go with diamond one at Linux CBT dot com and we've missed the D here and we need to complete the criteria in this case where email and there are many ways we can specify blank but we could say where email is equal to nothing or it's currently unset if there are any errors MySQL will throw it indicating that we've specified the criteria in an unparsable way so let's go back to the shell and attempt to execute this update query and debug if necessary. Now in this case we didn't need to be debug because the email equal to double single quotes effectively means a blank email address. In this case the email address field does not contain a null value. The reason why it doesn't contain a null value is because the default for the field as evidenced by the output of the describe people table reveals that the field does not take a null value. It will take a blank value but it will not take a null value. The other fields however default to null if no value is specified. So we screwed this particular record originally so that we could use update to update the 
value for the email column. Now we need to take a look at what's in this particular column for that particular record. So let's run a select and we'll select star from people where, let's be more specific, where f name or first name that is equal and we'll simply specify it is case and insensitive. Now two records are returned and notice that in one case the address matches the first name in the next case the address matches the first name plus it has a one indicating uniqueness. So now a select star from people will show that this has been rectified when you look at it holistically. There are other items that could be updated. For example, notice that in the last name column, and we just altered the output here, let's redo this. We actually pasted inadvertently. So let's select star from people yet again. And notice that there are two null values for last name. These can be updated as well. If you do a, an update query, with a criteria that says where equal to null, you can update based on that or just update based on some other field such as first name. So for example, let's say we want to update the last name to something that is not null. Copy what's there but update a different column and set the criteria to match a column that you know will match. For example, where first underscore name is equivalent to the person's first name where that matches update the last name column in this case it's last underscore name and we'll set it to a generic value so in this case it says update the last name and we specify misspelled it here this would have thrown an error update last name where first name is equivalent to this user now the reason why this criteria makes sense is because there are two records where last name is set to null only two records for everything else it's fine so let's go ahead and attempt to execute this update command followed by a select star from people and you'll see that it, the records have been updated now what if we wanted to rerun the update statement to change the last name no problem just change it just like that it changes it let's say we wanted to change it again it changes it again very simple so we can update based on a specific criteria. Now, what if we wanted to update just one of the records and not the other? Then we need to do a little bit more matching on a different column or match on a different column. So for example, we could match on the email column. So where email, because there is no difference between first and last name or business phone column, so we need to match on a different, on a field where there is a difference, which is enforced by the primary key constraint. So where email is equivalent to the value with one, or we could even use like. This would work as well. So let's go where email like percent indicating that anything could follow. Then we'll update it to be a different value. So in this case, we're going to update the last name for just this particular record because we're doing a like match on the email column. So let's set the last name differently and let's watch it run. Notice the first last name still is due, the second's Davis, and that's because the update query matched on the email address. We didn't use an equal operator, but we did use a like, which matched because in our small table structure, this was an easy match. Diamond 1% matched easily, so we had no problems making it work. So again, you can update values for all of the records in your, your table structure quite easily by not specifying any criteria or any clauses after the update statement. But if you do need to be specific, you can match based on any of the columns that are defined and run your updates that way. In some cases, using such a clause wouldn't work. For example, if we were to update based on using a criteria that matches business phone one then all records would be updated because everyone has the same business phone so you're looking for or searching for uniqueness and updating based on uniqueness for example we could update records let's say we want to update the phone number for all users or all employees with the last name of do 
we'd execute an update people and we will set the business phone to be something else business phone one to be equal to let's go back to the non toll free number and the criteria will be of course where last name like or we could set it equal to since we know it but we'll just go with like like works out percent and then when complete select star from people let's see so as you can see wherever the last names do the phone number has been updated to 203-543-8979 excellent so it's a little bit about using the update DML or data manipulation language statement we've gone through select insert update the next command to focus on is the delete command which allows us to delete in a similar fashion to using the update command